To build a truck from scratch, there are many crucial steps that need to be taken to ensure strength and safety, especially when you're dealing with high horsepower engines. That's why in today's video, I'm going the extra mile to strengthen my four link setup on my 1968 C10 Super Short. So this is my custom four link setup. And to further improve on my design, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of cool and custom fabrication today. So let's get started. So before we start reinforcing my four link suspension, I wanna build a battery tray from scratch and don't judge me too hard for my drawing skills. The triangles are a bit off, but that's the concept I came up with. And there's gonna be two tabs, one here and one here on each end. And I'm gonna bend these up once I have them cut out just to hug the battery and it should hold everything in place nice and snug. So I'm not sure which battery I'm gonna be using in the truck for sure. I know it's not gonna be this one, but this should be a good reference to know how big I should make the battery tray. So I'm gonna use it as a mock-up battery and I should be able to figure everything out from here. So to start off, I'm gonna be using some oil tank steel. This is a little bit thinner than 1 8 So we're gonna go ahead and make some markings. We'll chop it up. So this is my new battery tray. And what I plan on doing is folding in each side so that it holds the battery snug. And of course, this is way too long. Once I get that folded up, it would be way too high. But I left a lot of material on purpose and I'll trim this to the length that I want once I get everything figured out. So that is where my battery would sit. And let's go ahead and make these two bends first, and we'll go from there.
Let's see if the battery fits. Oh, it fits perfectly. It's gonna hold it nice and tight. Cool. All right, so now that I know the battery fits, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the edges, uh, round them off a little bit on the corners. Then I'll use a die grinder to clean up the inside edges of my triangles. So that's roughly where the battery tray is gonna sit. And I like the theme, it matches the rest of the chassis with the triangles. Before we start bracing this, I do wanna make some more bracing for my four link bars. Once I put the hammer down and these tires put the power to the ground, everything will wanna push forwards. So I do wanna make some more bracing behind the four link bars that'll connect to the frame. And then that way I'll know everything is gonna be super solid and it's just peace of mind. So let's go ahead and start designing a little brace. So this is what I came up for the design. Those two holes are just gonna be mounted to the chassis. And then this one is gonna be bolted up right where the vice grip is to that bolt on the other side for the four link bar. We'll cut this out of 1-8 steel and we'll have to do the same thing for the other side. So I made myself an aluminum pattern to know exactly what kind of bends I need. I marked them down on the new pieces. So I'm gonna bring this over to the metal brake. We'll bend them, then we'll try them on the truck. So the new brackets are looking super cool. It's gonna add a lot of strength, but we're not done yet. We're gonna add another one on the top section here. And then after that, there's no way that the four link bars are gonna be able to twist off. So this is what I came up with for my top bracket. It's very similar to the bottom one, but I changed up the angles just to make it look a little better. And I'm also gonna be cutting out a little rectangle in the middle to make it look cooler. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom one as well. So I've got both pieces bent. So now I just have to do some drilling and these will be ready to go. So I took out one of my four link bars and now I'm gonna drill out these two holes to attach my reinforcement bracket. So to make these boring old brackets a little bit cooler, I drilled two holes in the middle and you can see where I drew two lines where I'm gonna cut out that section. It'll add some dimension, so I'm gonna go ahead, cut that out and we'll see how it looks. So those are my two roughed out brackets. I think they're gonna look sick when they're mounted up on the truck. So 
So those support brackets are looking awesome. It just adds to the custom chassis and it's also gonna add a lot of strength. So it's a win-win and with the battery tray, everything just comes right together. So now we're gonna make a couple more brackets to hold the battery tray in its new home. tray I added a plate I just tacked it on for now I'll have to weld it in properly but that's just gonna attach on another plate that I made that's welded on the chassis and I also added in a plate on the other side of the chassis where you saw me spot weld those two bolts where it's boxed in and couldn't access it so now once I get everything welded up this is gonna be extremely solid and it's gonna look cool as well So you can see my battery tray and all my brackets are pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna take everything apart. We're gonna start sandblasting, cleaning those up. Everything is looking insane. The sandblasting did a phenomenal job. You can see that I put some primer on. That's the primer that I used. It's just some self etching primer. It'll save all the pieces from flash rusting or rusting even further. So my four link suspension is gonna be super solid and I'll also have a nice spot for the battery once I get that ready. But overall, I'm happy with what we were able to accomplish and everything just looks amazing. What do you guys think? I want you guys to let me know in the comments. So I really like how everything came out and it should hold up to everything I throw at it. We're gonna pick up where we left off in the last episode and start figuring out my steering situation. In my last episode, I had went behind my shop where I have a 2008 Crown Vic and took out the steering shaft and the column. I also stripped it down to see what I had to work with. So this is the 2008 Crown Vic steering column and I'm gonna try and make it fit in the C10. The cool thing about this is that it's tilt steering and I should be able to cut out a lot of the chunkiness. So I took the steering wheel off the column and I'm gonna try and chop off most of the excess aluminum. Now I do wanna keep most of these fins on the top and bottom at least, just to leave some strength in it. But overall, I'll see how much I can take out without really uh, digging into the structural integrity of the piece. Before we start cutting, I just wanna cover up this little bearing. I'll uh, put some tape over it just so that we don't get any debris in there. Save us a little time in the end. So I've been trimming away on the column and it's making a mess in the shop so I'm gonna move it outside and keep going with it. I'll show you the progress in a minute. touching up a few things on the column with the grinder. And I got reminded that aluminum dust is highly flammable. 
I was just fixing up a few spots on the column until a spark just ignited all the aluminum dust and now I have some soot or whatever this is everywhere. It's a big mess but luckily my clothing didn't ignite because I had quite a bit of aluminum particles over me. So anyway, now I've got quite a bit of cleaning to do. And just for a quick demonstration, I swept up all the particles and lit it on fire and this is what happened. All right, so I cleaned up that entire mishap. And back to the steering column, you can see that it looks a lot better than what we first started with. So it's a lot smaller. You're not gonna be able to see any of this anyway, but I'll be able to cover it up in a much smaller casing. After over two years with no steering wheel in here, it's a pretty cool feeling having one in my hand right now, but we've still got a lot of work to connect it. And honestly, I don't see why the Crown Vic steering column wouldn't work in here. The only thing that I am noticing is that I'll have to modify this hoop over here. The wheel's too far away from the dash, so it's kind of awkward, but once I get that cut out, I'll push it exactly where I need it. So I have the steering column temporarily mounted. Now I'm gonna try and make a seat just so that I know kind of where the steering wheel needs to be. With the steering wheel set, I marked where I have to cut a hole in the firewall for the steering shaft to go through. So now that I have the hole drilled out in my firewall, I'm gonna go ahead and install the steering shaft into my column inside the cab. Then I'll see where it sticks out and where I have to connect it to my rack and pinion. So now one of the pieces of the steering shaft is attached to the column. And originally on the Crown Vic, this is the piece that would have attached on the rack and pinion. But you can see that we're very short to uh, connect both pieces together. So to connect this end to this end, I ordered a universal joint and also a brand new three quarter inch steering shaft. So I haven't received it yet, it's in the mail. It should be here in a week or so. So right now I'm actually pretty much dead in the water for the steering without those parts. So we'll continue the progress once I get those parts. With that being said, that's where I'm gonna end it off in this episode. If you enjoyed the content, drop a like on the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and you guys already know, we'll be back with some more content soon. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.